as you can see here, uh, I freeze the asset. Mm, and uh, here the final screenshot shows uh, the message uh, that the, like uh, the transaction uh, created with this transaction ID and the asset uh, opting with this transaction ID and uh, the asset uh, transferred with this transaction ID and finally the asset freezed with the transaction ID. Uh, here is what I did and uh, so I didn't include the front end part because uh, I haven't uh, make it beautiful. That is why, but the button works. This is what I did. No, that, that's excellent. So, but even if it's not beautiful, if you have a screenshot of your front end, you can show us. I don't have, but uh, I can't start it if that. No. Go on, go for it. Okay, okay, wait for me. Sorry, I didn't open the project yet, that's why. You can show us, prepare it, and then I will call you later. Okay. Okay. I think I started it again. Okay. If you started it, go for it. Okay. Fine. Um, as I said before, it asks you the name and the password. So when you log in, it checks if you are on the uh, the list, the certifier list. Then there is a button that says "Claim my certificate." When you press that button, uh, this will happen, as I showed you. And uh, since <coughs> When I start the backend, uh, it says uh, the KMD wallet is not working. That is why I can't uh, show you now that. No, no, it, it is okay. So you have an authentication, a, a, um, a Web2 authentication that goes in and everything is a Web2 until you claim or you do some transaction which goes to the blockchain, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you press the claim certificate, that is why the Web3 part begins. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks for the quick summary. So we go for mostly for uh, the people who are volunteer and then otherwise we'll follow um, uh, the other like the suggestions. So let's go to Ms. Gano. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear morning. me? Yeah. Okay. So let me share my screen and start. Okay. So let me start with the front end. Uh, yeah, I try to make a simple front end for the project. So I have, we have, uh, yeah, in my front end, I have two roles. I have the staff role and, by the way, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we do. Yeah, so I have a staff role and the training role. So uh, in my case, what I assumed is uh, 10 Academy uh, admins or tutors are going to create users. So they are going to enter the information for that. For example, uh, I'm going to enter the name. Actually, the full name and uh, email. So uh, then I'm going to press the. Oh. So, oh. It is okay. Yeah, uh, I think I have correct the uh, email format. I just say that to me. That's right. Uh, yeah. So after I press the create new trainee uh, button, what's going to do is it's going to take the name and it's going to create the certificate. And I'm using the OpenAI key and it's going to use OpenCV 
to input the name on the certificate. And after that, it's going to create the asset for the certificate and uh, it automatically sends. But we uh, still, we still, we still haven't. So is that, are you still in the same screen? Because it's yes. after create new trainee. Okay, so from the front yeah. side, we don't see anything. It's only just like it's creating in the back end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to create on the back end and I'll show you on the, on the transaction of the data flow. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I only shared a single tab. That's why. Yeah, you but can reshare if okay. you want just uh, the window, if that helps. Yeah, but it's not letting, I think I was trying to fix it, but uh, okay, again, okay, let me show you the, the data flow. Uh, it only shares setup, but I will, I'll fix it. I was, I was trying before this meeting. I was trying to fix. Yeah. No, don't screen. worry. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Just you can share. So, share. Okay. Let's let's show you the transactions. So on the transactions, so one minute before we created uh, one asset. If you see, yeah. After we press the email, it automatically creates an asset. And uh, if you see the details of the asset. Uh, yeah, uh, then after I create the user, so in order to the to receive the certificate, I think the uh, I think the the user have has so well, user is going to opt-in for the certificate so it's just a form on the front end then the asset id I, yeah i will send this uh oh shit. yeah basically i'm not sure why it's not working but don't worry sometimes they have yeah, their own way off yeah. What I try to do is when yeah. let me show you the workflow on the front end. So the user enters the information, the email and uh, the name, then the certificate is going to be created. Uh, then after that, uh, the email will be sent with the transaction well, with the asset ID. So after that, the user, uh, I mean the train, by entering his name and the asset ID, he will going, he's going to opt in for the. Where does the person get the asset ID? Who's, yeah, I will send it automatically send an email. I will send an email. email. Okay, by email. Okay. Yeah. So after that, after the train enters the information after, and opts in. So on the staff role, at the bottom there is opt in requests. So it will list the the list of the uh, the list of the trainees or students who have already opted opted in opted in, and uh, there are two buttons that say uh, approve and decline. So if it press uh, approve the asset automatically transfers from the training, to, from the title to the train, or from the admin to the student. Yeah, basically that's the workflow, but yeah. Yeah, great. And um, what was the most exciting part in this that you have implemented or, or something that you wanna share something, one thing, one thing the most challenging and one thing that was exciting? Yeah, to be honest, uh, yeah, the most challenging part was understanding the workflow. It took me too much time to understand the workflow of the project. Uh, I spent maybe four days. I start implementation on Friday. Uh, that was the difficult part and uh, creating and transferring assets and uh, accessing the certificate using the public key that was the interesting part for me. Yeah. Uh, Great. And for the future work, I think in my implementation, I used private keys to find transactions, but it's not advisable. So maybe for the future work, maybe wallet integration, so that I can use the public key to sign transactions. Yeah. I think that should be great. Yeah. More or less, this is my work. Uh, I would be happy if I would share the whole workflow, but uh, I think it's not working. Maybe I will fix it and show it. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Gano. Basilen? 
yeah, you guys, you can hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, okay, let me, let me share my screen and then uh, try to show you a couple of things I've done. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. So, uh, basically, this is the work that I've done. Uh, this is where, uh, when you go to the site, this is what you'll first see. So, the first uh, is for the tutor, and when the tutor comes, uh, he will have to create a, a certificate with a training name, training email, uh, and then the public key and the private key. Uh, as Ms. Kana was saying, uh, I did not integrate wallet, and so this is not advisable, but uh, I did not have enough time to uh, to do the whole thing. But just to show you quickly, so uh, let me let my email here and yeah, just insert like a, a public key and a, a private key. And so we would create it. So once created, uh, eventually it should automatically uh, send an email. So if we maybe try to go and uh, Look at my email. Uh, it's I yeah here it is. I've been sending a lot of emails myself, but uh, your certificate is complete. And so yeah, uh, we give the user the asset ID, which is uh, very important. And so now uh, the trainee is meant to use this asset ID to come back. Uh, and so once you come back, uh, the student now has to opt in. Uh, again, I did not use uh, the, the wallet, so here uh, the user or the student is supposed to put in like their IDs so that uh, their ID and the private key as well as the asset ID we just uh, have from here, which is 10. And so, yeah, it would submit. So once uh, submission comes, uh, now it's up to the tutor. So the tutor would go to the request. And so now with the asset ID, again, this has it has a lot of flaws and has a lot of fix, but uh, it would have, uh, now the this would give us a chance to accept or reject. So if they want to accept this uh, transaction and they want to uh, give this to the, to the provided uh, student, then, uh, they would accept and uh, it would it would generally work. So that is the workflow. Let me try to uh, demonstrate that from here. I'm not sure which one is uh, which. Uh, okay, one moment. Uh, yeah, so, okay, to, to come back. Uh, Uh, of assets. Okay, so we can we can see here. This is uh, the asset, and uh, this is it. This is the the receiver side. Uh, so the receiver now has uh, a certificate with this number, and uh, if we want to uh, if we want to go here, we would see uh, where is it assets. Wait. We would see the same thing, but uh, with uh, without it. That that is because uh, the certificate was not uh, was not transferred. So, yeah, basically uh, that was what I did. Uh, it it's lacked a lot of implementation, uh, and yeah, if if I get the chance in the future to improve it, uh, that's what I would do. But uh, basically, yeah, that was what I did this week. Okay. Great. And so what about the certificate, the task one part, like were you able to integrate that as part of the flow, the pipeline, which is the, the generation? Yes, uh, yes. Yes. So uh, that, that uh, here it is. So this is uh, basically the certificate I generated. Uh, and if, yeah, you are, we, if you are showing, we, we, we are not seeing it just. Oh, okay. One moment. 
screen. Yeah, so this is this is the first part. Uh, this is basically the certificate I I uh, I did, and then so it would it would put it on a hash, and it would give us this number. This would serve as a, as a URL so that when the when the person wants to go in, they would they would it. Now the the issue with this, and the reason I didn't integrate it to uh, my presentation was because. Uh, so sending it to Pinecon with my internet was taking really long. Uh, ChatGPT gave me like a, so the size was almost three megabyte, and so when it tried to upload, it would it would take time, and so I would really take time in the presentation. That's why I just uh, I took that part out for the presentation. Yeah. So to not make you guys does it does it does it so is the design generated like auto generated or is it just designed so how 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 did you generate and how, how would you incorporate like dynamically some information to it i did i did uh put some uh dynamically generated things uh, if, uh, so i did put it in my presentation the reason i took out the certificate generation and the dynamically inputting part from the presentation it would take a long time uh, to, yeah, I understand, but I mean, in principle, it should not be three megabyte, right? There, there should be items in it, and then only at the final generation can be a high resolution if that is required. But normally, that uh, generation and all that could be slightly at lower resolution. Um, yes. Um, anyways, it's, okay. I should fix that. But yeah, we we. With the one that I had uh, was three megabytes. I think I downloaded it in HD because yeah. it was and had a problem. Okay. So, and, and what is one thing that was very challenging, and what is one thing that was very exciting? Uh, I think for so similar with Miscano, I I've never uh, worked with blockchain, and uh, I didn't understand the workflow. But but really reading through. Uh, what the issues with the current web is and it's just being a pipeline and uh, now we get a chance to uh, to actually use it as a as a flow of state and so we can make use of uh, transfer of value and and the, the core concept of web3 was it was very interesting to get to understand it's very big and it's not something i would understand in one week but but I get the problem that was uh, to be solved. And so that was very interesting. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Basile. You. Thanks, Brahan. OK. Next, we have uh, yeah, Dewey Brahan. Am I audible? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, go yeah. on, go on, Brahan. Okay, am I audible now? Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, last week was a challenging for sure, like as obvious, but it was more challenging to understand the real concepts and then um, what's happening behind in the blockchain and then the actual concepts. I think that was the biggest struggle and also understanding, as said before, understanding the actual workflow was challenging and also confusing for me. And I really want to thank you for helping me figure out some things and your supportive suggestions. Uh, I, I want to take this chance now. I will be starting to share my screen and... Um, okay, um, so can you share my screen now? No, now we can see. Okay, good. So what I, what I did is like as um, as the task one like generate image using OpenAI GPT and um, work around it. So one second, uh, it closed it. It's own. So I did. I try to generate a lot of certificates, <laughs> and none of them gets to become appealing at some point. I don't know. Uh, at the end, I get to pick just this one and 
try to customize it in such a way, like add the uh, the name and then the, the title and the date and things like that. And also I try to uh, add the photo a little bit in here, <laughs> if you can see it. Uh, okay, so in anyways, so after a while, this, uh, what I did is try to create the flask. So, uh, maybe, maybe let me just comment for everyone here. And that's called prompt engineering, right? And as you can see that whatever you are using, mostly DAL-E or an, another one, they are biased towards something. And so it's about unbiasing them and giving them some details. So this week's project is going to be a lot more on really getting what you want from um, you know, large language model or uh, generator AI, you know, generative AI models. So, just yeah. good that that was the ins the reason why we put there just as task one so that you can understand what it means prompt engineering um, in that in that sense. Okay, continue, okay. Brad. Okay, then after a while, this I try to understand and write separate functions for so, user. So just to ask, so you have added this the texts and the image using CV or something else? Like, is it also by CV2. just generation? Yes, and using CV2, CV2, okay. for sure. Okay. We can, okay, we can see the script is no, no, no use of that right now. So uh, after a while, this, I try to use KDM, which is like, you can use, for the wallet to log in, you can use the username and password, and then you can get into your account. So in that wallet, we can create multiple accounts and find the account um from the local net so basically that's what i tried to do and then afterwards i created in the pointers so what my models look like is like i tried i track i tried to make it as and then the challenges are separate and then the certificates because like we can have a user right and the user is differentiated by their role if they are a trainee or an issuer means a trainer or trainee so and then we have the challenges they have let's say they have their week number or a lot of informations there and then we have the certificates so the certificates is actually being created by the which is the issuer and then the trainee will come and then ask for the to, to have uh, to obtain the asset and then afterwards if the issuer approves it the um the Training will get the certificate at the end of the day. So let's see the web and not not, not waste the time. So um, what I did in here is like I didn't do actually all of the reply um, points, but in here it shows this is a training account, and this account shows the certificates uh, ID and then their title and um, issue uh, dates and then the approval status if there is no request and then the pending, and they can be approved. So if there is no request and pending, you can't get the certificate. And if it is approved, you can actually get the certificate in here. So I hope it's loading. Um, so, so this certificate looks like this, right? So uh, this is a trainee. So if, we, if, we, if I get to sign out and go to as issuer, um, Okay, so as issuer in here, I, I can transfer or I can uh, revoke. Uh, I can also in here freeze, I haven't added that, but if there is no, uh, there is no, this is a pending request, if you can see, there is um, someone is pending for it. So if I click the transfer button, it will ask me for password. So when I add the password, it will uh, transfer the asset, hopefully. <laughs> Um, um, I hope it has transferred it. No. Um, so it was working. I don't know what's happening, but um, okay. I think it seems so In any ways, let me not take much of a time, but it will transfer for sure. When you transfer, when you click the transfer, it will. I don't, I don't know what am I really missing. Um, and anyways, so that's what I did, um, basically. So you can opt-in also for the seat. Okay, if I request opt-in, um, 
it will update. So if I, I don't think okay, there is some problem with the backend, I think, I guess. So let me not take your time. Um okay. So it's saying unauthorized. Okay, so I missed something or the password. So in any ways, that's how it works basically. That's what I did. Um, and, and and what what about the wallet integration? So how does okay, it do is that for, for the wallet actually what I did was when user creates an account, I created an endpoint and then I automatically create for it for starting off. I create for it a local uh, net account and also with, with some balance on it, right? So we can make that a separate thing, but for now, like to be able to, to try and let's say to opt in, the account must have some uh, balance. So when you create, when I create the user, what I'm gonna do is like in the backend, I will go to the wallet and create that user. If it is existing, it's not gonna create it. If if it is a new user, it will create that user using KMD wa um, wallet account. And then afterwards, if there is no account in the wallet, I will create the account and fund the account also so that I can easy my transactions. That's not the best way to do it. Actually, I can make that into the front end and user creates dot account. But for the wallet integration, I tr I try to see the default full stack uh, thing and I just get to come this, but I haven't actually integrated this one. It can it can log in again. It's not integrated with the current functioning this thing, but this wallet connection can connect to this uh, wallets and we can you can work around it. But the, the one thing which is remaining to work on this is like if I am logging with this additional wallets, add into the account list of this created user, right? So that user will have um, default local wallet and uh, the external wallets account also. Great, um, wonderful. Yeah, no, I think that's that's good. And I am happy that you, you were able to go as far as uh, also authenticating and all that. I think that's, but just know that others, you know, it's all about presenting what you have. It's not about, you know, completing it. But in this case, for example, this is good. And the wallet integration would be next. And then I think from that on, with the property generating, you will be able to do a better certificate generation. And that means like this, this is almost there um, to be much more of a complete project. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Oh, thanks. Um, Rudolf, and then we'll go to Belad and Okay, good morning, Yabiba. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Yes. Happy uh, happy to be with you. this opportunity yeah. to present my work even though it was an unfinished work. Uh, it uh, gives me some seconds to share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Okay, good. So, uh, first of all, what I did, uh, I generated the certificate. Uh, I used uh, the open AI key. Um, I use the open AI key and uh, When I generated the certificate, I realized that what I generated was not uh, was with a, a lot of uh, symbols and other things. So I, I find the idea to generate a blank uh, background of a certificate, first of all. And when I did that, uh, I did that with uh, Is uh, this code uh, where uh, the prompt uh, the prompt I was saying in the prompt simply nice register certificate background template. So when 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 I put up prompts, I generated a a, a a simple certificate, and then after that 
have only a few half to here. This is one. I can do it. So as you can see here, it is blank. Nothing is uh, on that certificate. So after that, I use uh, I use the Python and the CV2, Open CV2 to to generate dynamic uh, certificate. And in this one, I just provide uh, uh, a, the logo of uh, Ten Academy and provide uh, a, my name i choose just my name normally here what i should do is to is to make it more dynamic i will ask the user to provide uh, his using uh, his name and uh, other things so after this one i the the certificate that i generated look like this one As you can see, uh, I added the logo of Ten Academy. This is the name, uh, this is the date, this is the grade, and this is uh, uh, the post certified by Ten Academy founders. So, this is the simple uh, certificate that I have generated. So, when I have done these facts, uh, I went to the uh, backend, and uh, for the backend, I didn't do much. After, uh, what I did was to generate um, a template of the backend using algo kit. Uh, when I did that, uh, also I, I did the same for the frontend, but having not having enough experience with uh, React and the things, I didn't gener I didn't do any frontend, so I can't show anything for the frontend. Now for the backend, I was struggling to uh, to my contract. My contract. Uh, uh, so normally, this is where I should I should create all my all. Uh, the assets and other things that will happen in the in the in the backend, and I was struggling how to to integrate all those things. So finally, uh, my work was uh, unfinished, and uh, the time was closed, and I just submitted like that. So this is the the work I have done. Yeah. I'm not really happy for that. No, but thanks. I think you know it's 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 all just. I think what I want is exactly like that. Whatever you have done, you demonstrated, and that is excellent. Thanks, Rudolf. I think this is the spirit that we want, like where people just are whatever they do, they present, uh, not just sits or because it's not complete or not. So I think this is excellent um, participation as well as excellent. You know kind of attitude and i'm really happy hold off so okay um we have like uh, abdul hamid i will give you a chance but before that if there is anyone from the suggested one we want to present Melat, Mekdes, abraham Kerot, aron Sinke, deriva anyone want to go first <clears throat> okay then abdul hamid then proceed and then next we'll call the others okay good morning everyone can you hear me yes we can hear you all right i'll be sharing my screen can you see my screen now yes we do. all right so i'll be starting with the article i wrote for this uh, project. Uh, 
before I start, I want to say this has been one of the most challenging projects I've been I've come to. Uh, like till Saturday, I couldn't figure out where and how I should do things. So most of the work you'll be watching here will be done uh, uh, almost on Saturday. So uh, bear with me. So this is the, the article I wrote for this project. In this project, uh, Ten Academy would like to. Uh, so I, I described the objective in which Ten Academy would like to. Uh, present the certificates, the graduation certificates using the Algorand uh, blockchain securely. And I also talked about the Algorand blockchain, its market capitalization, uh, the number of accounts it has currently, and each transaction speed, which is around 3.3 .3 seconds for a block to be uh, added to the blockchain, and also the transaction cost, which is around uh, $0.00018 as of uh, January 14. Uh, the, the tech stack for this project I used was Fast API for the back end and React.js for the front end. So I first cloned the sandbox, uh, the sandbox and created uh, a local blockchain uh, so that I can run the Algorand. And then I used the PyAlgorand SDK to interact with this uh, local blockchain. Here I'm creating uh, a, a, a default account using the PyAlgorand SDK. So once I have an account, I then created an admin role in my fast API backend that's responsible for creating the trainee's uh, graduate certificate as an Algorand asset. So here, this is a way in which uh, the code that creates uh, uh, asset. So once an asset has been created, oh, this is uh, where the, the how the uh, UI looks like for creating an asset. So once the asset has been created, a trainee would be able to opt into that asset so that uh, they can receive the asset as a graduation certificate. So here, the trainee is opting in uh, by entering his full name. So once uh, the trainee has opted in, the admin will then be able to uh, approve this request so that the uh, asset will be transferred to the trainee. So finally, the trainee can see uh, how the asset, his NFT certificate uh, looks like. So we can also prove that transaction is happening using the DApp flow. Uh, one of the biggest challenge for this was, like I said before, getting the flow of it. So, uh, and then integrating a wallet has been the uh, one of the things that I couldn't figure out to do. So I was just using the local sandbox account to do this. So this since this project is utilizing the blockchain, my feature plan was, is to uh, like learn a lot about how blockchains work and also how the decentralization aspects they bring is, uh, how, the, how that will help us in decentralizing the internet. So now I will show you uh, a demonstration. Uh, you can still see, see my screen, right? Yes, we do. All right, so here I have a login, uh, a web to login, since, uh, like I said, wallet integration is, I, I wasn't able to do that. So here, a username as an admin, I have created two default accounts. So one is an admin and one is a trainee. So first, an admin logs in, and here, uh, he can see opt-in requests and NFT certificates that has been created. So inside, there has not been any created. I'll say an issue on NFT here, and I'll give the name for the uh, user that's getting the NFT. So here I will just enter my name. I'll do in here. The Pinata image uh, hash is where I, I the image should be stored in the blockchain. So I have a Pinata, I, I have a Pinata image hash stored here, and I'll just copy that image hash. That's just the certificate. I'll show you what the certificate looks like. This is what the certificate looks like. This has been, this has been generating the open API uh, certificate base and then uh, manipulated using the open CV. So once I copy this image hash and then enter it here, I have the initial one NFT. So this will be creating an asset in the backend, hopefully. For some reason, it's not. Let's check away. Or maybe it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay, so uh, the balance has been has run out. That's what it's telling me here. I'll just refund the balance. Okay, so now I'm showing. 
Okay, elephant is a Chinese account. Chinese account. Okay, issue an NFT. Let's just refresh this thing. Okay, so for some reason it's not creating uh, All right, so now it has issued the uh, asset. So here we see the asset, uh, the ID, the asset ID, the name, and also the image. This image is what uh, I showed you here. So now the training. I'll go back to the training. And the training, as you can see here, there is no certificate that has been issued. So he uh, obtained to the to get the uh, asset. So here I'll enter my name and opt in. Once I opt in, I'll log in back as an admin. And here there is an opt in request. So uh, Abdu, what I entered to opt in. So I'll approve this request. And now this NFT has been transferred to Abdu. So I'll log out and log back in as a trainee. So here I can see my uh, certificate status. So it has been approved. And here is the image of the certificate. I'll just copy that and paste it here to see the graduation um, image. For some reason, IPFS seems to be getting blocked, but this is what I have done for this uh, week's project. Thank you. Excellent. Really good. And and what is one thing that is, I mean, it, and also it shows like the persistence, right? It, you know, you don't have to know a priori many things. And if you persist and just even when you have one day left, sometimes you can do it, right? So I think that really demonstrates that. And it's, it's almost about this figuring out things and uh, till the end, because if people did it, then you do it, right? So it's just a matter of time and, and really demonstrate that spirit and well done, uh, to Hamid. So mm -hmm. what is one thing that you um, find it challenging and what's one thing that's was very exciting? So one thing I found challenging was uh, integrating the wallet. So the current uh, way of I, the things that I did was I used the private key of the trainee to sign when uh, he's trying to opt in. So I don't think that's the correct way of doing it since the private key needs to be uh, secret to the trainee and the backend shouldn't have any knowledge of that. So I think that would be solved if I integrated the wallet. And uh, what I'm excited about is how this uh, technology, the blockchain technology, would help in uh, increasing the transparency in this uh, network, in this in, in the internet, so that people can just uh, go to the blockchain and see what, what what's getting uh, served in a decentralized manner. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. And I think we are just only five minutes from there, and I would really have liked to see some of the females that um, I know you have done well, some of you um, to present. Unfortunately, that voluntarism were, is, is kind of not becoming a norm. I would have really like, I think, you know, presenting here has a lot of advantage just by the way. And first is like everyone knows and next time they are also in the job and they are asked, you know, who do you recommend? They would recommend that person. And that happened almost all the time. You know, either in the group work or in just this presentation, people would see you. And it's almost always like, you know, that's how it happens. And I would see you and everyone else see you. And that allows people to kind of get idea about like, okay, what is that person strong about? You know, whether you complete, don't complete, but that ability to to really speak up. And I know it's challenging and I, and I don't take it, I don't mean it's easy, but it is almost always every week is a trial. Right. Every week is an opportunity for you to 
improve. If you just keep it for yourself, just there, just almost there to press it, but you don't press it, I think that's that's not. I mean, just get out there and like press the hand and wait until you get cold, and then maybe you did you were not prepared. You get prepared along the way, but next time it gets easier. One, one you know, it gets easier. But if you don't do it this week, next week it's gonna be still the same. It's not gonna be easy, and I think that aspect of it is you have to really really understand that for whatever you want go for it don't wait for people to to ask you to go for it and i hope you understand what i mean uh, because that's probably the most i can tell you look i can't force you but i can tell you that is the most important thing and um it's really a matter of like doing that and not doing that is a matter of sometimes di living different types of life so um, I hope you understand. Okay, so let's stop here and we will, in five minutes, we'll start um, the challenge walkthrough. Thanks everyone.